Hi everyone, meteorologist Gary Woodall here, and welcome to this episode of the Mid-South Weather Musings. In today's episode, we're going to continue our discussion of weather radar, talking about velocity signatures. Stay tuned, the episode's coming right up. In a recent episode of The Musings, we talked about reflectivity signatures on weather radar, signatures that might suggest a storm could be strong or possibly severe. In today's episode, we're going to talk about velocity signatures that might suggest strong straight line winds from a thunderstorm, storm rotation, possibly even a tornado. So let's get on into it and look at some of these velocity signatures. As a reminder, uh, the WSR-88D, the National Weather Service's Doppler radar, can measure velocity toward or away from the radar site. In this case, the radar site is where we see the blue KNQA, and this is the Memphis uh, National Weather Service radar up just outside of Millington. The warm colors, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, indicate outbound motions or motions away from the radar. The blues and the greens, the cool colors, indicate motion in towards the radar. And the brighter the color, the higher the speeds. Now there are a couple important things about velocity images. First is that we'll occasionally see some purple areas like we see uh, in here. And that is called range folding. Basically that is where the radar system says that uh, it cannot calculate a reliable velocity estimate in that area. So it's going to color it purple and just mark it as unknown. The other very important thing we need to remember about uh, radar Doppler velocity images is that the radar cannot see motions perpendicular to the beam. It can only see motions toward or away from the radar along the beam. And that has some important implications when we look at velocity signatures. Now there are four primary velocity signatures that we can look at. Again, the radar is here in the middle where you see the blue KNQA. If we see a signature like this with outbound motions to the right of the radar beam as we're going along the beam and inbound motions to the left, well, uh, in our minds, we would uh, connect the dots there as we show with the dashed arrows. And this would be an indication of counterclockwise rotation or cyclonic rotation, what we would look for with a supercell with a mesocyclone or possibly even other smaller scale rotation in the storm. Now if we see a signature like this with, again, looking, from, looking along the radar beam, outbound motions to the left of the beam, inbound motions to the right, this would be an indication of clockwise or anticyclonic rotation. If we see a signature like this with outbounds further away from the radar, inbounds closer to the radar, this is an example of what's called divergence, or a spreading out of the targets. This is what we often see with a downburst that hits the ground and starts to spread out away from the storm. Sometimes a, a divergent signature may show up up at the top of the storm where the updraft is going up and the, uh, the, the anvil is spreading out up at the top of the storm. And then the fourth main signature, if we have outbounds closer to the radar, inbounds further away, <clears throat> further away this is an example of convergence. Uh, the targets are coming together. We might see convergence uh, at lower levels of the storm, underneath a strong updraft that the storm might have, a strong inflow feeding into that updraft. Or we might see convergence in the mid-levels of the storm if a downburst is getting ready to start. But you notice that all these signatures on the surface look the same. They all have red on the right, green on the left, outbounds on the right, inbounds on the left. It's the position of the signature, though, with respect to the radar that tells us physically what's going on. So again, knowing where the storm or the signature is with respect to the radar is very important. Now there are a couple of different types of velocities that we will often see if we're looking at radar on our, uh, our, our tablet or our smartphone app or on a website. Base velocity is ground relative velocity. How are the targets moving with respect to the ground? 
Base velocity is usually best for estimating straight line wind speeds. It's not very good for trying to look for areas of rotation. Also, if the storm is close enough to the radar, base velocity might give us a feel as to how strong the inflow is that's heading in towards the storm. Now, storm relative velocity, the other flavor of velocity that we oftentimes look at, uh, is storm relative. Oh, how are the targets moving with respect to the storm? Or what is the storm actually feeling? So we subtract out the storm motion. Storm relative velocity is best for identifying rotation in the storm, such as the uh, signature that we see right here. And storm relative velocity is also good for looking for those convergence and divergence signatures as well. And just as a reminder, uh, we do have uh, these couple of different types of velocity images. They may look similar on the surface, some, some warm colors, some blue, uh, cool colors, some outbounds and some inbounds, and maybe some range folding. You need to look closely at the image title to make sure that you're using the right type of velocity product for the situation that you're looking at. And uh, again, this is storm relative velocity. The signature really jumps out here, this rotation signature. Going back to the base velocity, well, we have some very strong inbounds here, some weaker inbounds here, but the rotation isn't quite as evident, not quite as easy to pick out as it is in the storm relative velocity. Another example of base versus storm relative velocity. Uh, this is a radar picture of a squall line that's approaching the Memphis area from the west. And here we're looking at the storm relative velocity. And if we look at the inbound velocities behind the, the yellow dash line marks the gust front, by the way, the inbounds mark the outflow that's pushing out ahead of the line right behind the gust front. Well, if we look at these inbound velocities, we have some medium greens in here showing up. So that's probably, oh, 20 to 30, 20 to 30, 25 to 35 miles an hour or so, 20 to 30 knots or so. So you may think that's probably not going to be that big of a deal when it comes through. But again, we're looking at the wrong velocity product here. We're looking at storm relative velocity. For straight line winds, we need to be looking at the base velocity. And here's what the base velocity showed. Very bright greens, even some very light uh, bluish colors in there. So probably in the 50 to 55 knot, 60 to 65 mile an hour range. So again, storm relative, best for rotation. Base velocity, best for looking for these ground relative straight line type winds. So when we're talking about Doppler rot uh, rotation on the Doppler radar, there is some terminology that often gets thrown about. One of the more common terms is rotational velocity. It's abbreviated as VR. And this is the average speed of the rotation. We take the uh, strongest outbound, the strongest inbound, add them together and divide by two. So a higher rotational velocity indicates a stronger circulation. Now, the, the key values, the, the threshold values, are really going to be dependent on how far that rotation is from the radar and some other characteristics as well. So there is no magic number that specifies the rotational velocity may be enough to produce a tornado. We also may hear the term velocity difference, or delta V. And this is the difference between the maximum outbound and the maximum inbound velocities. Again, there's no magic uh, delta V threshold to say that a tornado is occurring with a storm or not. It's dependent, again, on a number of features uh, associated with the storm, distance from the radar being one of those. We also may hear the term broad rotation or gate-to-gate -gate rotation. Broad rotation means that there are several pixels between the strongest outbound and the strongest inbound. And that's often what would be seen with a mesocyclone, larger scale, storm scale rotation. Gate to gate means that the maximum outbound and the maximum inbound are right next to each other. They're, they're pushed up right next to each other. This can suggest a tighter circulation, one that might have a stronger possibility of producing a tornado. 
Again, these rotation strengths are dependent on a number of features, a distance from the radar. The size of the rotation may play a factor as well. Uh, why? Because beam spreading. The further out we are away from the radar, the wider the beam will spread out, and so the more some of the smaller scale features are going to be smeared. The resolution won't be as good. Again, the size of the circulation may play a factor as well. For example, if we have a circulation that's three and a half miles across, a rotational velocity of 30 knots and a distance of 40 miles from the radar, well, that three and a half mile circulation is only going to be classified as a weak mesocyclone. But if that circulation is one mile in diameter, 30 knot rotational velocity, 40 miles from the radar, it gets classified as a moderate mesocyclone because, uh, again, the, the smaller circulation is going to be harder to see further away from the radar. So it's more significant if it's showing up. Also, these nomograms, these mesocyclone strength diagrams, don't specify where in the storm the circulation is. It may be up aloft in the storm, uh, not a threat to produce a tornado, or it could be down close to the ground. It just doesn't specify. So the bottom line, again, there is no magic number as far as a threshold for when a rotation is going to produce a tornado. We can also see scales of rotation with the uh, velocity data as well. Of course, here we have reflectivity, and we can see the hook echo in this area here. And looks like maybe a little bit of a debris ball signature. Uh, we talked about that when we talked about reflectivity signatures as well. Possibly so. Taking a look at the Doppler velocity, the radar is off to the northwest, so we're looking down southeast at the storm. And uh, we can see the rotation signature right in here. But there's actually a couple of different scales of rotation that are going on here. We have a larger scale rotation, sort of going from the, the pink outbounds to the medium blue inbounds. This would be the mesocyclone circulation, sort of the rotating updraft tower, storm scale rotation going on in the storm. But if we take a closer look inside there, we can see a few pixels of the bright yellow right here and the bright purple right here. A smaller, stronger, tighter rotation that is taking place. And that is called the tornado cyclone. It's not really the tornado per se, but this would be more like the rotating wall cloud scale of rotation. And uh, spotters uh, would be important in confirming just what is taking place uh, underneath this storm. And this storm was producing a, a very large tornado at this time. Now, even with all the valuable data and information that the Doppler radar can give us, the uh, fast scans that we can get now, storms can still develop and change and evolve very quickly. This is a series of radar images from uh, April 13th of, two, of uh, 2019. We actually had a couple of significant tornadoes that occurred in Monroe County, Mississippi. Uh, the radar is just off to the northeast of the frames here, just off the upper right corner of the frames here. So we're looking down to the southwest at the storms. At 11.03, we had a little bit of an appendage uh, coming off the south to the southeast flank of the storm. By 11.05, uh, we saw a little bit more curvature there, looking a little bit more like a hook echo. By 11.07, a, a tight hook echo was evident on the uh, associated with the storm. Taking a look at the radar, at the velocity data at this, these times, uh, the 1103 velocity, strong convergence, outbounds closer to the radar, inbounds further away, strong convergence at the base of that storm's updraft, suggesting strong updraft may be taking place, but really no signs of rotation uh, in the low levels at 1103. These are all the half degree lowest slices from the radar. By 11.05, we did start to see some evidence of rotational velocity, uh, and that was about 25 knots that we saw uh, the rotational velocity with the signature right here. But by 11.07, that rotation had exploded uh, a very small, tight circulation, 83 knot rotational velocity, and this storm was actually already doing EF2 damage at this time. So very rapid development from convergence to some rotation 
to very strong rotation. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Mid-South Weather Musings. If you like what we have shown and talked about in these episodes, then keep up with us. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. If you're watching on Facebook, then be sure to like and follow our page. Uh, that way you'll be notified for future episodes of the Musings. And if there are other topics that you'd like us to cover, be sure and let us know about those as well. We'll try to work them into a future episode of the Musings as well. So thank you all again so much for watching. Everybody keep safe.